Laconia. It is Tuesday, February 2nd, 2016, time being 6.30. We can begin our published agenda. Uh, please, uh, let's see, the recording secretary will be Kalina Graham. And Kalina, would you do the roll call of the members at the table, please? Mike Lamani. I mean, Della Bucky. Here. Edwin Bonas. Present. Jay Tiffany. Present. James Bounds. Here. Neil Here. Here. Don Richards. Here. Hamilton McLean. Here. And Chair Hutchins. Sharon. Chair Hutchins. Oh, Chair. Oh, okay. Chair Hutchins. Uh, and uh, staff members with us this evening are the planning director, Shanna Saunders, and assistant director, Brandy Logan. Uh, please, let's see, we have a quorum, and Mike, uh, Bill Contardo is in Florida, being a regular member. We would like you to, to uh, vote in his stead. Thank you. Uh, let's see, if anyone in the audience is here for the application, uh, application acceptance for 93 and 109 Weirs Boulevard. It's near the end of our meeting. That one is just a um, an acceptance. There's not going to be a discussion tonight. And so if anyone is here for that, we hate to have you wait all the way through it and realize there's nothing that's going to happen other than the formality of accepting it. Good. Um, our first thing uh, will be a uh, presentation by uh, our planning director, Shanda Saunders, on the Plan New Hampshire charrette update of our master plan. Thank you. Um, so I apologize. The screen I'm going to be talking to is back here. So for those of you in front of it, you may want to turn your seats around so you can see better. Is this flagging your way? Anybody's way? The flag? Okay. No? Okay. More lights or is that good? That's good. Um, um, so I wanted to talk today about the charrette that the reimagined Laconia process had back in August. It was a two-day charrette happening over August 28th and 29th, 2015. We just received the report today for that, uh, this week for that project, so I wanted to present that um, to you, the planning board. So the uh, charrette was um, done by a group called Plan New Hampshire. Um, Plan New Hampshire is a nonprofit group with a mission to foster excellence in planning, design, and development. Their membership is made up of architects, landscape architects, engineers, planners, building and real estate professionals, lawyers, and financial and insurance firms, as well as others. And they pull from their members to provide volunteers for communities that um, uh, apply for and are granted um, their charrette process. And those volunteers are the ones who come to your community, take off to a day of work on Friday and then additionally spend Saturday um, with the community to help come up with the recommendations as part of the charrette. So what is a design charrette? A design charrette is a brief intense brainstorming session where ideas are brought together collectively by the people uh, for the purpose of defining potential planning and design recommendations. So it's a multi-step process. The first step is to identify the need or the question, <coughs> the ask. The second thing is to collect information from the community itself. Then the charrette team, the professionals, the volunteers in this case from Plan New Hampshire, try to understand more deeply and broadly what the situation is, and they analyze and evaluate what they've seen on the, on the ground, what they see in maps and resources that we've brought, and what they've heard from the people, and they come up with recommendations based on that. So our charrette, again, was over a Thursday and Friday afternoon uh, in August. Um, it actually started Thursday morning with what we called a meeting with the stakeholders. So a lot of you guys are probably involved with that. Um, um, other decision-making individuals, business owners across the city. Um, we had then open sessions in the afternoon and evening on Friday. And then on Saturday was a large open session at the mill where the charrette team really moved forward with ideas and sketched stuff out. And you'll see some pictures of that. Um, so immediately the Plan New Hampshire team ID'd four big challenges um, that the city faced. Um, the first one is the economic push-pull of Bike Week and its um, effect on the Weirs. The second one is the perceptions of downtown, um, the urban renewal kind of left over, um, and what people think of downtown versus the reality. The third one is Lakeport and the fact that it's kind of sandwiched in between downtown and the Weirs and doesn't have a really strong identity of its own. 
And then fourth is the fact that all of the amenities and villages, shopping areas are geographically separate in Laconia. And in most cases, you need a car to travel between them. Um, and I'll address that a little bit more as we go through. So um, in the open sessions, Plan New Hampshire um, kind of broke out what they were asking folks into two pieces. One is what exists and then what do people want to see? So what exists? We heard about a tight housing market. Um, we heard about a lot of rental properties. We heard about great schools, but changing demographics. Um, the drug problem was brought up quite a bit and the perception that this kind of brought to the city. Lack of public transportation, uh, transition to economy, new businesses coming to town, which have added some um, uh, new energy to the, to the villages. Um, the history of Laconia and how people value it. Um, Canal Street and its kind of thriving art scene downtown. The small down, downtown feel. Um, and I think I missed the, in there somewhere about the natural resources in the lakes. So what do people want to see? Um, more public water access, better public transit, better signage, including wayfinding signage, more businesses and apartments downtown, expanded WOW Trail, making Laconia a year-round destination, a better perception of Laconia, both internally, the residents and the people that live here, as well as externally, the people that come and visit and the other communities that surround us. A larger <coughs> arts and entertainment scene, um, and then better care of local properties, and the need to attract young families and young professionals who stay here. So they started off their recommendations with a section in their report <coughs> on connectivity. Um, and they talk about kind of a weak transportation network around Laconia, and the fact that many of the residents, when asked if they visit the Weirs or downtown, often say that they don't go there. They found in particular that the Weirs in the summertime, the place that's probably most appealing to go to in the summer with all of its amenities, um, is the place that most residents said that they did not travel to. So they talked about in their report adopting a transportation strategy that supports not just vehicular traffic, but walking, cy cycling, and public transport. Um, and they, say, they talk about how this is going to affect not just the visitors as destination, but current residents, including the teens and the millennials, many of whom are choosing not to drive, um, as well as the seniors. It also, they also talk about those that work in the city, um, especially in the tourist-oriented businesses along Weir's Boulevard, that they have other options from going to and from work other than getting in their car. Um, that city businesses that depend on employees for service sector jobs, often, often working irregular hours, could have great access to a greater labor force, and that it would be a more attractive place to young professionals um, and potential retirees and young families looking for cultural vitality and outdoor recreation. One of the images that's in the report um, um, that helped them talk about uh, the wayfinding was this one. And this came from one of the volunteers that recently completed the Main Street Project in Concord and its updated wayfinding. And this shows, and I apologize, it's a little washed out. It shows all of the different types of wayfinding signs that Concord um, looked at in determining which ones they would use downtown. I'm not sure that all of these were used, but there are many, many options for wayfinding signs. They talk um, about wayfinding in, in all three of the villages across Laconia, and I'll get into specifics. Um, but I thought this was a very interesting image and one that we could um, pull ideas off of. So now I'm going to go through each of the villages. The first one they talked about was Weir's Beach. So you can see here um, the way that they presented these results was really by, by reiterating what they heard from the citizens. So there's a history in the Weir's. Um, they want a year-round destination. They want it to be attractive. They want, easy, want it to be easier to get around on foot. They want to use more of the land for a longer portion of the year, especially the large vacant lots. Um, they don't want any recommendations that will discourage businesses from opening. They would like a boat ramp for local residents for access to Lake Winnie, uh, Winnipesaukee. And um, the fact that Weir's kind of needs a facelift. There are many empty lots and rundown looking buildings. So that's what they heard from the public, from the public sessions and the people, the stakeholders they talked to. Um, oh my gosh, this image is very washed out. I apologize. This is actually on the, on the uh, right hand side of this picture is a picture of the old Sanborn map of the Weirs. Um, and it basically speaks to the historical factor um, in the Weirs. Um, and the fact that many of the camps, motor courts, recreational buildings, arcades, um, the pier, the Weirs Beach sign, and the boardwalk, which they 
thought was probably the only um, inland seaside resort style boardwalk in the state all um, go way back in history and really deserve some protection. Um, they call them st significant historic resources. They really thought there should be plans in place to preserve these structures um, and some sort of maybe zoning overlay or form based code to encourage continued um, uh, con construction that, that um, complements what already exists down there. Um, so I apologize again for that image being very washed out. Um, the other thing they talked about with the weirs um, is the walkability. So here's a picture of where Weirs, inter, uh, Weirs Boulevard intersects with Endicott East and North at um, what we um, uh, formally referred to as Malfunction Junction and now has the, the rotary there. Um, and these three circles are basically um, 10 minute walking nodes. So from the center of the circle to the edges is a 10 minute walk. Um, and basically what they said is within these circles, it makes good economic sense to make walking and biking easy and pleasurable by improving sidewalks, adding bike lanes, and improving signage so that the 10 minute walk does not become a 20 minute walk. So that the visitors and the residents really have an enjoyable experience when they come down to the weirs and are able to move around. Um, so this, and now this image speaks also to the fact that in most cases, <coughs> visitors that come to the Weirs have to get in their car to drive from wherever they are staying, their hotel, motel, to the boardwalk, to the grocery store, to the restaurants. It's all car dependent. Um, and so they really talked about providing that alternate transportation, uh, protected bike lanes, enhanced pedestrian connectivity, um, so that the tourists can get around when they're on vacation without having to worry about where to park or how to move their car and choking up the streets. They also um, provide some recommendations for some of the large vacant open lots um, that were in the weirs. Um, this was one of the top concerns identified by the stakeholders. They said given the attractiveness of Weirs Beach, their first thought was a hotel. And so they um, outlined three locations they thought that, that uh, might work. One is um, lot 14, which is the um, uh, near Cumberland Farms, it's kind of the open, large open lot there. Um, they thought a hotel would per work perfectly there and that it was very walkable to a lot of the amenities, very centrally located and walkable. Um, lot 8, which is the former volcano water slide, would, be, would also be a wonderful spot for a hotel, although they spoke about the first floor being um, storefront retail to take advantage of the Lakeside Ave uh, street frontage that it has. Then they talked about lot 12, which is the former, Car former Carl's restaurant, and the fact that that site really enjoys high traffic um, uh, uh, visibility and that that site would probably be better for a retail facility but a low intensity retail facility. Um, something like a rental shop for motor scooters or bicycles or a coffee shop, something like that. Um, they recognize that the economy may not support a hotel or mixed use development or a new retail establishment. So they did provide some temporary options for some of those parcels as well. Um, the first one is kind of a, a temporary type canopy, large scale temporary canopy, which could accommodate um, some both summer and winter activities. Um, summer activities like boat shows and car shows, but winter activities like perhaps an ice rink if we were able to flood it and freeze it, um, or maybe even a parking spot for smoke, snowmobiles. Um, one of the ideas I thought was really interesting that they proposed, and I, I um, am not familiar with, but they presented, um, is happening in Franklin. Um, I guess Franklin is installing um, one of these, is a solar power array, um, and in Franklin it's gonna power about a thousand homes, where you can um, have it, give it some height, and then park cars under it. So it's kind of a car park, a shaded car park type of area. Um, it also could house, say, a, f a farmer's market or a flea market under it and provide some shade to a summertime activity. This would then provide the business owners with some income on that property as well. Moving on to the downtown. So in the downtown, um, folks told the Charette team that there was a perception of kind of um, ill drugs and homelessness and, and, and um, safety issues. Um, that residents want more things to do downtown, more businesses and shops, especially locally owned, that more quality housing is needed. Um, they want to see the downtown play off its history and architecture. They want to make it easier for people to walk around downtown 
and provide safe pedestrian crossings. Um, they want downtown to have a small thriving art scene. Uh, they recognize the colonial as being very important and they wanted more recreation and night nightlife options in downtown. I provided a quote here from the report. Um, this comes directly from the Plain New Hampshire people. I thought it was worth um, reading. Laconia has one of the great urban downtowns in New Hampshire with stunning historical buildings that are open to the public. The train station, the public library, and the Belknot Mill are all within easy walking distance of one another. So they really thought our downtown was really quite amazing, and I think that's really something to build off of. Um, the way that they looked at downtown was they kind of broke it up into Beacon Street East recommendations and Beacon Street West recommendations. Um, for Beacon Street West, they really pointed out that the Bank of New Hampshire um, property um, really has one of uh, a, a wonderful opportunity to add um, to the overall look and feel of Beacon Street West, um, where they may add some green space um, and some plantings and some lighting um, that would really make the entrance to Beacon West look um, very, very nice. Um, um, and they also talked about potential build out um, once the, you know, you know, in the future once the bank decides to rebuild. Um, they talked about the Veteran Square area and again providing some green space and bump out areas. Um, and what this does is it basically narrows the roadway at the point of the pedestrian crossing to allow the pe pedestrian crossing to be very, very short. Um, and so that people feel much safer when they're crossing the street and they don't have to cross huge exp expanses of crosswalk. Um, that crosswalk across this area at Veterans Square is very, very long. Um, and for folks that um, have low mobility, um, it's a very scary crossing to get through several lanes of traffic, um, what, four or five lanes of traffic in that one crossing uh, without a, a, a cross signal or anything like that, a crossing signal. Um, and then on Beacon Street West, um, a lot of the same stuff, um, making those pedestrian crossings as short as possible, adding some green space, some bump outs, um, bringing the, the, um, the lighting fixtures down to a pedestrian scale. As you can see here, the big white gooseneck light um, is almost a highway scale light. Um, it's not a, a light fixture that you would see on a roadway where the speed limit is probably 25 miles an hour or so. Um, and what they did say with most of these in downtown is that these elements are things that could be put uh, painted in temporarily with cones and things like that so that the city could actually try them before we actually invested in them. Um, and the Reimagine Laconia process um, has talked about doing that in some of our road labs. We did have a road lab on Weirs Boulevard um, and then we got snowed out um, from bringing the road lab to downtown but we will be bringing that back to downtown especially since I understand today um, um, the groundhog, is it the groundhog that tells you? Yeah, mm -hmm. sounds like we got spring coming quickly. So hopefully we'll be able to do those, those road labs fairly shortly. So moving on to Lakeport, um, the citizens in Lakeport told the Charette team that in Lakeport, businesses often suffer from lack of adequate parking, that the Union and, and Elm intersection is not pedestrian friendly. Um, there needs to be more opportunities for connection um, to the waterfront, that Lakeport is centrally located but often overlooked and that people rem remember Lakeport as a thriving village center. Um, and this quote, I, I won't read it, but it basically speaks to the fact that there has been a lot of work in Lakeport, that Lakeport kind of felt left behind since the 2007 EPA report, but there certainly has been some work done as we move forward in Lakeport. So their recommendations for Lakeport. Number one was the parking issue. Um, in their opinion, Lakeport doesn't have a parking problem. Um, and they thought that there was a significant amount of park of what they call parkable area in Lakeport um, near Fratello's and the Opeachy Inn, but that the issue was, was distilled down to whose parking it was and how accessible that parking was to the area businesses. Um, and so um, they talked about that the sea of asphalt with very um, limited wayfinding um, often was, gave a sense of confusion to people trying to navigate that area. Um, they also talked about um, the intersection of Union and Elm Street and the possibility of, talking, of making that much more pedestrian friendly. So they talked about signage um, and theming that supports the idea that Lakeport is a place to come for a nice meal, meal a bike ride, and for a picnic by Lake Beachy, <coughs> and to visit the Freight House Museum. And they talked about rebranding it Lakeport Junction. So here are the recommendations they had 
um, for Lakeport, develop a collaborative parking plan which would allow businesses to share parking as an asset to the community and include in that a signage program that informs visitors of parking options, provide pedestrian-centered intersections at what they call the junction, so the intersection of Union um, Ave and Elm Street, visually significant and controlled to connect all four corners easily and provide safe launching points at intersections through curb cuts, Enhance traffic flow by removing on street parking on the east side of Union Ave and providing for um, left turn queuing onto Elm Street. Enhance the bicycle access to the neighborhoods and uh, improve the pedestrian bridge off of Gold Street to create a spur off the WOW Trail. Promote co current commercial development on the east corner of the WOW Trail in Elm, configured to channel access to Lake Opeachy. Um, now, the e they also said contrary to the EPA report where they talked about taking down um, the Lakeport Fire Station and turning that into a park, they thought it should be preserved because it was a great example of mid-century modern architecture. Um, and that was something that came out right away. Um, however, they did talk that street, uh, streetscape enhancements as were talked about in the EPA, 2000 EPA report, um, should be completed. Um, They also wanted to talk a little bit about Union Ave. Um, they basically pointed out that roads like Union Ave, um, seldom loved by anyone in the community, but the, but the businesses that they are home to are a very important part of the tax base. And they also serve for a home for many important long established businesses. Um, and so again, I apologize for the quality of this image, but they talked about basically providing um, a streetscape that um, accommodated both, both cars bicycles and pedestrians and gave a sense of safety um, and that the you know the city could adopt basically a pro program of putting in roads like this wherever they do uh, road upgrades now I know on Union Ave the city has been trying to do that when they redo Union Ave they have been trying to put in that sub lawn um, with some vegetation and upgrade the sidewalks um, so that's something that we certainly should continue lastly they talk about um, the uh, leadership in economics. They were um, impressed with the progress that had been made over the years. Um, it was really great for them to be able to see um, the, the progression of master plans and then the EPA report and then what has happened on the ground. Um, and they think we're doing a, a great job in, in getting stuff done. Um, they talked about, um, let's see, continuing the pattern of wise capital improvements such as the Gateway Park um, and investing on projects that improve transportation opt options and the connectivity of the different parts of the city. Um, and again, they speak to the EPA report and many of the other um, reports that have been done um, that provide really strong recommendations. So with that, I just want to wrap up by saying a, a thank you to the Plan New Hampshire team. Um, it's set of volunteers, typically Plan New Hampshire sends um, three to four volunteers for a charrette. You can see we had very many more. Um, it was fantastic to see such a well-rounded group. And I also wanted to thank all the citizens of Lakotia that made this uh, event such a success because without all of their input, um, we certainly wouldn't have had um, all, as much input and all these great ideas. Um, so with that, I can take any questions that you guys may have. Your plan is to present this around the city to different groups yes. and so that the public can come and hear it. Yes, thank you, thank you. So we plan to take this presentation on the road. Um, we have already been in touch with many of the citizens groups, the Rotary, um, the Chamber, um, to be able to present to their boards um, and commissions. A lot of the same groups that we presented the reimagining process to the first time. Um, and, and continue to get input from this report. Um, the input from those presentations, the report itself, plus all the input we've received already from the Reimagined Laconia process will all go into helping us put together the land use chapter of the master plan. That's, that was going to be my question. Can you hit the lights? Yeah, that's my, that's my real question, yeah. is how we're going to incorporate this in the master plan, or what phases into the master plan and what the time frame is for that. Yeah. So this specific piece of the Reimagined Laconia was to help us kind of set the groundwork for the land use chapter of the master plan. We're also working on the transportation chapter, the natural resources chapter, and the economics chapter. 
Um, our plan is to host uh, an event um, probably the beginning of the summer, midsummer perhaps, um, where we bring drafts of those chapters out to the public. And each one of those chapters is based on what we've been hearing. So we've got the charrette, we've got the um, New Hampshire Listen session we had at the Belknap Mill, we had the poster session at the OPTN, we've had um, our parking days where we got out in the community, we've met with the Belknap County Economic Development uh, Group, we've met with the Chamber, we've met with the Rotary, we've met with the Main Street Initiative, we've met with Weir's Action. All of that input um, uh, has been taken into account when we're drafting these reports. So our plan is now with these drafted reports to go back out to the public and say, look, this is what we've heard from you. Did we get it right? And are we on the right track with these recommendations? And, um, and be able to get some input on, um, from folks out in the community before we finalize those chapters and, and, and uh, move on to the chapters we haven't started yet, which include housing, um, community facilities and services, and cultural and historic resources. When do you plan to start those? Um, Probably not until the fall, because we, we want to really get these heavy, well, not that I shouldn't say the fall. We'll probably start on them a, after, after the large session in the early spring and summer. So late summer, fall, we'll start on those. <coughs> and I'll ask as a city council member, when are you going to come before the city council and brief all of us as to where we're at? So um, my hope was to kind of trial this before my very friendly planning board and then next um, come to the city council, <laughs> who I know are going to be just as friendly. I'm very friendly. I know you are. I know you <laughs> are. Your intent is to pass out copies of what you're presenting I do have tonight. copies, yep. And, and this homework. is on our website. Um, me? Yep, and we kind of made the announcement to everyone on our Reimagine Laconia um, uh, email list and Facebook page. Um, that this was out. It's been up on our website, so hopefully everyone has kind of seen it by now. Anyway, and, and so. Where do these drawings that are on the front of the building, uh, Yes. where do they fit in? The posters that are down front? Uh, of proposed possible changes to these various locations. That they're in the... Yeah, the, in the windows. Yeah, so all of that came from the charrette. So most of those came right from this report. All right. Yep, yep, and in fact, a lot of those were j are just draft form. Now that we've got this presentation done, we'll pull from the presentation and update those posters on the final sets of maps um, and keep those up for a little while longer. I must say, too, I can't tell you how many times I've walked out and seen people um, looking at those. It's yep. a great opportunity for the public to come and take a look at those posters. They can take their time. I know it's been a little bit cold to stand out there over the winter, but we'll make sure that those stay up through the spring so you can come and take a look. And then always, you know, come reach out to the planning office and email the Reimagine Laconia website, um, you know, and, and ask us any questions you may have. We do have a uh, subcommittee working on this, um, but I'd just like to reiterate, this is a um, responsibility of, of this group right here, this table. It's, it's not something that we can say to the city council, hey, you guys write it. It's not their responsibility. It's our responsibility. And, and so taking uh, <coughs> these as these documents come together like this and in, in the quiet of, of your study, just going over them, and then please uh, get back to uh, Shanna or, or Brandy about uh, things you don't understand, things that could be phrased differently, things that uh, you think might be missing so that uh, we, we all, <coughs> we're all in this together and, and at the end each one of us needs to sign the darn thing. And, and so it, it is our responsibility and we appreciate your help a lot. Super. Uh, next uh, on our agenda is uh, any questions to, uh, about this at this time? Okay. Uh, extensions, uh, we have none. Uh, there is a continued public hearing. It's application PL 2015-0138SP-153 Church Street. It's a proposal to uh, demolish a vacant building and add landscaping to its place. This is the uh, building on the junction that's uh, called uh, Busy Corners. Uh, it has been moving through the process. It's been to the Historic uh, Commission, and they have reported back on it. And uh, for our purpose here, it's just being continued to March 1st uh, because it is a, um, for them, uh, a complicated issue. The uh, CVS did close on the property, so they did acquire the property from the former owner. 
and so that that's that's very important can I just add one quick thing to that sure. um, the city has signed off on the demolition permit which does not go through this board um, the Heritage Commission did sign off on it because it's a, a an older building um, they basically said it's not a significant uh, building so it's not one that they wanted to have a public hearing on they did ask for the busy corner sign there was also kind of an um, odd and unique uh, granite step into the building so they asked that that be preserved with the thought process that um, there be some sort of memorial placed using that step um, in the in the future park so um, it, it very well may be that the next time we meet when we're talking about the park which you guys do see under the site plan process that the building will have been demoed by then so I just wanted to give you a heads up on that Super. any questions about this no, we'll see it again here in uh, next month now on uh, public hearings we'll move on to that application PL 2015 0134 SP 95 Centurion Avenue um, MBL 139-37-48 it's a proposal to change uh, the approval use of a building we've already approved the site plan and approved it as a building for retail storage and food service to that of a uh, hotel um, the application was accepted uh, last month and I will now open the public hearing at uh, 701 Shannon, did you want to say anything before the application presents, or do you want to just wait until no. a normal order? Yep. Okay. The applicant is here. Would you like to uh, talk with us about this? Now, don't be nervous, but you're on television. Hi. Um, my name is Kurt Mayu, representing Aquamarine Yacht Club, LLC. Um, um, we're here tonight, um, uh, the proposed phase four of the marina uh, to construct it and the relatively um, change it from what was a proposed retail space, some storage, um, and some food service area, to convert that interior space to eight hotel units. Um, and then a, a club area in the basement that'll be primarily a locker room and some um, like gym type space uh, for the members. So um, the change of footprint and change of the overall cosmetics of the building and everything's staying very true to the initial, the original um, intent of it. Um, so from a public perspective there's really no change other than uh, in my personal opinion eight units will be less of an impact on like the traffic flow of the area and stuff like that um, our parking calculations and everything are in line they're actually more in line with what they were originally proposed as um, and if you'd like I can kind of walk you through the area we're talking about Even more washed out. Let me see if I can fix that. Do you guys need a light on? <coughs> or do you want it off? Off. Oh. Mm. Um, I may be able to make it show up a little better. Her hold, bear with me. <clears throat> Just a second. Yeah. Just leave it. Well, you guys have the plans in front of you, so if you can follow along up there, you can probably see a little bit better on your plans. But um, from here over, has been constructed. I think most of you are probably familiar with um, the established club and in the, in the the beach bar and the volleyball area and everything that we've built there. Um, you know, we, we welcome a lot of the public. It's a public area to go into the the beach bar and everything. So we've had. You know, I think it's a tremendous resource for the lakes region, really. Um, and this is the space right here that we're 
currently talking about. So there's an existing brick pump house that's right here that I think most of you folks are probably familiar with. That's where it is in relation to this building. And this is the end of the current cabana. So you can see how we're going to build this L-shaped building that ties the two together. And then this section here um, is part of the entire construction that is not going to be constructed this next coming construction season. So the intent is to build this, build all the infrastructure, get the site completely built in phase, what we call phase five will be pad ready um, for construction of that building. Um, so this building here, there's some additional drainage infrastructure that needs to be installed. Most of it's actually already installed, but the tie-in that ties the public um, drainage system from Centenary Ave, we're going to reroute it right now. It goes across here and onto the beach. It's a, it's a tremendous erosion problem, actually. Um, so what's going to happen is we're going to discontinue that pipe and we're going to tie in your system into our new system and it's going to go over here it's going to enter and there's a level lip spreader and everything that's established and vegetated so it's going to be an upgrade to the city's drainage system when we get that installed the same goes for the water lines we're going to be all the way back here and we're going to be um, installing new water lines all the way up centenary ave to here be doing some other capping and infrastructure to make some corrections to the water line that exists down there um, it's pretty um, straightforward on the interior of the building. It's eight hotel suites. They're going to be very, very nicely uh, constructed and finished. They range from one, two, and three bedroom units. Um, so they're kind of like you're probably familiar with like a Hilton garden suite type thing where there's a kitchenette, like a galley kitchen. There will not be a stove in it, but there'll be a sink, a refrigerator, a dishwasher, um, and there'll be a little sitting area, kind of like a breakfast nook, um, and they'll all be done in that Adirondack type finish, which will be very attractive, um, I think, and, and we're going to bring in new people, so these won't be um, the same people every single weekend, it'll be turning over, which will hopefully help out local you know, businesses, bringing more people to the weirds that are staying here, so, you know, it's all good things I suppose. Um, How many units will there be? There'll be eight units. So it's it's really not very big. It's just um, a boutique hotel, if you will. Is there a limit on height there? 60 feet. 60 feet max. For commercial uses. Above, above grade. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, average. Average. Mm -hmm. Across okay. the... Yeah. We'll be closer to 35 feet in this section. You guys have any other questions or uh, where does where will the, uh, the the new drainage you're tying the city drainage into uh, your private drainage where will that exit where does it where does it empty into right now it empties onto the beach right. mm -hmm. um, and what's going to happen is we're going to discontinue that it's going to proceed in uh, 18 inch HDPE until it hits a 36 inch HDPE that we installed a number of years ago for um, the railroad mm -hmm. it exits um, kind of it's it's kind of cut off on this plan yeah uh, it enters a level lip spreader and a couple spillways before it enters the lake um, over beyond the docks kind of in the woods it's a it's a well vegetated area but um, it, that was in need of serious repair that used to be a channel there that would erode and, and knock out the railroad tracks uh, several times so this Right here was a, a tremendous upgrade, this 36-inch pipe. Will the avenue be able to uh, remain open during this uh, construction of putting the uh, stormwater and the water main in? <clears throat> when we construct, um, reconstruct Centenary Ave, because it does shift a little bit, the whole street, um, in talking to Luke over at DPW, our intention is to actually create a temporary bypass onto our property over here to facilitate um, construction in that area, these water lines and drainage and stuff like that. Um, so the idea is to get all 
anything that's going to impact the street <clears throat> done as much as possible before May 15th. Of this year. Of this year. Um, <clears throat> and then depending on there's tremendous amounts of coordination for such a tiny little site that has to take place between the water drainage and electrical because all the telephone poles which i think will be a really nice addition to that little gateway that goes down into into uh, centenary in, in the methodist there's all those telephone poles go underground so starting back at our nearest abutter back in this area we're going to remove, I think it's three or four telephone poles and put all the electrical infrastructure underground. And Luke is uh, satisfied with that uh, mm -hmm. street plan? Mm -hmm. <coughs> who's, who's doing the engineering? Is this a city plan? <coughs> because these plans aren't stamped and there's no engineer's name. Um, there's a lot of underground stuff going on. Yeah, who was it that did the engineering? Nobis Engineering did the original Correct. stuff. Yeah. All the underground, everything. Well, it sounds like there's a lot changing. Wouldn't an engineer have to give you a revised plan? No, so all of that infrastructure was all pre-approved under the Nobis plan. The only thing that's changing is the footprint of the building and then and then basically some of the well, ties he's up. he's winding the road. He's in, and that's in the original plan? Yep, so yep. the water, the up. sewer. Um, there's a couple of little relocations and, okay. and, and um, tie-ins from the main um, be different you know because it's going to go into the building in a different location but all the uh, that's all original part of the yeah. Novus plan yeah okay. thank you do you want to talk about parking and loading real quick sure yeah that was a great comment that came up during the the TRC one meeting actually um, so during the original scope of the, the development and, and sorry if I confused you there Jerry the all the infrastructure and everything's part it of the It sounded original. like a lot of changes were going on, and I couldn't tell. No, was I, I, I was just kind of yep. refreshing you guys because I think it's been a while. The the real only big change is the interior of the building, mm -hmm. and then a couple great observations like the one I'm about to talk about. So this cul-de-sac here was originally the loading and unloading for the marina, really, and through you know years of just observation, and then you know the hotel lobby is going to be right here. So it was a great point to create some quick 15 minute loading zone type things. So we're gonna add a hotel loading zone and a marina loading zone. Um, so we'll put some signage there, this is like 15 minute loading. Um, so what happens a lot of times is the boaters come up on a Friday and the dad drives up and they unload all the stuff. We have carts there for them to use on the docks. They load everything into the cart um, and then, you know, um, the dad goes and finds a parking spot or you know however that works out but um so we added these two parking spots right here on the boat ramp so there's no change to any layouts or anything we're just going to stripe it a little bit differently um adding those two defined spots so kirk you're pretty much finishing all the utilities pretty much right? yes so you'll be, you'll be looking pretty good did, all the did site the railroad work. ever do everything that's all done the crossing and everything that's all it's been when, a while since i walked up the hill the railroad crossing, I mean, that's another good point, actually. So if you're familiar with the way that you go over that railroad, yeah. right now it has a very bad angle on it. So if you're in any kind of low car, you're going to bottom out. When we're done this, so we go in and we do all our infrastructure work, um, and then the railroad's going to come in and they're going to redo the, 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 the stuff underneath the actual the intersection. letter from 2006 where they were doing a bunch of stuff. That's all going to happen yeah, so that, that whole thing's the curse is going to be taken off of it. That the street on the lake side of the tracks is going to be lifted up a little bit. Okay. Um, so it's going to help out a guy in his Corvette, I guess. Yeah. So just to, just to follow up on the parking, um, so the project originally got a CUP for the parking, the off-site parking lot across the street. So that's where all the parking is for the cabanas, the marina, the restaurant, the hotel. So that's why the loading zone's on this side, and then people will go park the car across the street in the large parking lot, which will also be finished, final paved, striped as part of this as well. Oh, that's part of it too? Yep, mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the intention here, what we call phase four, I know it's not yep. a phase, is um, all the infrastructure, everything's going to be complete, and phase five is going to be just pad ready. We're going to have yep. the utilities going right up to it. Um, as much of everything we can possibly think of site work wise will be complete. The pump house, are you covering it with the siding that you're using on the hotel so you won't even know it's there? Nope, we're going to, um, the, the original, original plan had us siding that in stone, but we think that the brick 
really looks nice. We actually had it repointed, uh, um, so it's going to stay the brick. Oh, it is. Okay. Um, on the interior and the out exterior, because I don't know if you're familiar with that structure, it's it's true double thick yeah. brick. Yeah. So. What are you going to do with phase five? Because I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Do you know? We, I mean, we, we so far nothing's changed. That'll still be a, a restaurant. Um, I'm not going to say that we're not going to come back and, and possibly ask for the same thing we're doing right now to change that potentially. Um, it just hasn't. I don't want to close the door on the restaurant just yet. Okay. Excellent. If there are any other questions, staff, would you like to make? Um, so, as uh, Kurt explained to you guys, um, this project was originally approved um, back in 2008-ish. Originally, it was approved back in 2003. Um, it then expired and was reapproved in eight or nine, 2008 or nine, something like that. I think it was, yeah, eight. Mm -hmm. And so this building um, was part of that original approval. So the building, as it stands, with a retail and food service use is approved and they could go right ahead and, and do that right now um, but they have come into us because they want to change that internal use and then there is a, I think a small change to the footprint yeah it's um, it's, it's pretty minimal but just a very small <coughs> they filled in a little bit of a jog um, a couple hundred square feet yeah um, it, so it's it it's just that internal um, use change the parking doesn't change um, they are going to be doing um, upgrades to the drainage and water line as originally proposed um, as part of this phase. <coughs> um, just a couple of things that we would um, note if you're looking at, all, at the plan revision list. Um, most of those are technical revisions having to do with the sewer lines and uh, water lines, things like that. Um, the only other uh, not related uh, things are that uh, if the lighting plan changes from what was originally proposed, um, which we anticipate it likely will because the use is changing, they'll have to come back to us and meet with us and just we'll make sure that that meets the uh, lighting regulations. And that's just a staff review. It doesn't have to come before the board. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question for the, for the planning department. Um, the plan revisions you refer to, you can't have four kitchens. Correct. Mm -hmm. Is that part of our ordinance, or is that does that come from someplace else? Um, so we don't well define a unit. Um, in speaking with our legal counsel, though, the way that we have defined what we call a separate unit, residential unit, is a kitchen. And in order to differentiate between a wet bar, which we see often, which includes a sink, a dishwasher, and a fridge most often times, which is often in a basement, in a rec room, or maybe over a garage, from a full kitchen, um, we uh, we call a, a, a full kitchen includes a stove. So that's why we made it the requirement that these cannot have stoves so that they are not full residential units, they're actually hotel units. I, I guess I, I'm not complaining about it, but I don't understand the logic of it in some ways in terms of what we're doing. So maybe we can just take a look at that at some future time and figure out why we're doing that, that way. Yeah, I can go into a, a yeah, let's, let's do it a different time. I, yes. don't want, I don't want to do it now. Yep, that's perfectly because fine. Yep. You're okay with not having the stove in there, right? Yeah, it's probably for the best. Huh? It's probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you have two F in your possession? Do I have what? 2F. Plan revision 2F. Yes, I do. Okay. And all these B, C, D, is that happening on this or is that happening on Nobus's plans that's stamped? Let's say Nobus. What are you allowing? What are you expecting? Um, you for plan revisions. Are you going back to the original set of plans or are you going with this? I don't know. I think that would be a question we would ask to the Water Department and the DPW Department. Um, I can imagine that the water department would it, they would probably go back to the Nobis plans um, because it's a public water system and they're very strict about that. Um, public Works is much more comfortable with doing field changes, so they may be okay with um, a marked up, um, basically a field plan. Basically, all of I'm this. I'm just not sure what you used to see, and it's just all of this will be captured in as builts, okay. which will be recorded. 
see no other questions. Uh, is, are there any abutters in attendance that would like to address the board on this application? Any other taxpayers of the city of Laconia that would like to address the board on this issue? Uh, seeing none, then I will close the public hearing at uh, 20 minutes past 7. <coughs> uh, like to, no <coughs> changes to the dates. I'd like to uh, right. Correct. make a motion to grant conditional approval for PL2015-0134SP. Project completion dates plan March 1, 2016. Site improvement April 5, 2016. Mylar April 5, 2016. And completion February 7, 2017. Plan revisions A through F. Um, conditions uh, uh, that must be done prior to final approval uh, A through G. Conditions to be completed prior to start of work, A through B. Um, uh, conditions applicable during and after construction, A through H. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, then I'll call the motion. All those in favor, raise their right hand. Any uh, dissenting? Seeing none, I'll call the uh, motion uh, unanimous. Um, thank you very, very much. And thank you. We'll be anxious to see the uh, construction. You hesitated, so I thought you were taking the cheap way out. Thank no, you. I was looking for the looking for the next thing to say. <laughs> okay, the uh, next uh, application. <clears throat> is uh, application uh, PL 2016-0005SP amendment 72 uh, landing lane and BL 441-510-14.052 it's Laconia Millworks and this is our well Shanna why don't you yep. um, explain this yep so the first thing I want to explain is that I do not believe there's a representative of the applicant here is that correct okay um, they tried valiantly to get someone here they were unable to they wanted us to proceed with it if we could without them um, but said that they could certainly come to another meeting if there were questions um, from what I understand Schinberg has other projects in other towns and they were at several planning and ZBA meetings tonight like four or five of them across the state <laughs> so they did not have somebody to come to this can, can we stop there and accept the application then? Yes. That's why they're not here. We want to have that. I would like to ask for a motion to accept the application. So is the staff, uh, yes. it is complete. Then I'd like a motion to accept the application. So moved. Second? Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is, a, the application is accepted then. And I will open the public hearing at uh, 723. Now, as Shanna explained, the applicant is not here, but would you represent their interest, sure. please? Um, so this was pr approved um, way back in, oh gosh, I should know that, um, oh, 011, maybe. Um, this is for building three, which is the rehab of the existing um, building off of Beacon West. Um, they are finished, uh, and I should say, and building one, which is the building over the river, um, over the canal. Um, they are moving toward um, certificates of occupancy for building three. Um, they have temporary certificates of occupancy right now. They're moving toward full certificates of occupancy, which is at the time that we assess the impact being collected. And as I started to look at what they were, um, what they needed to pay us for the impact fee, it occurred to me that they had never asked for the waiver that's allowed in the ordinance for. Um, um, uh, let me read it. Um, the planning board may waive up to 80% of the impact fee for a property assessed with an impact fee if after review of the project proposal, the planning board decides that the project is 100% infill, rehab, and reuse. Uh, there was no doubt that this project of mm -hmm. Building 3 was infill, rehab, and reuse. The reason this was put into impact fee ordinance was to encourage the rehab and reuse of, of vacant properties. 
Um, and so I, I just checked with them to make sure that that was the case and they said, whoops, they had completely forgotten it the first time around um, that they had intended to ask for that waiver. So we let them know that they need to come back for an amendment to their site plan to ask for that waiver. So that's simply what it is tonight, is them asking for that infill, rehab, and reuse waiver to get the 80% reduction on their impact fees. Thank you. Are there any abutters that would like to address the board on this issue, on this application? None. Are there any other taxpayers in Latonia that would like to address the board on this application? Seeing none, then I will close the public hearing at uh, 725. Is there then uh, any clarifying discussion you'd like to have before a motion is made? Yeah, I want to know what they're saving. Yes, I can tell you that. So this is considered a multifamily building, three or more units. Um, so for each unit, um, it is an impact fee of oh, oh, $1,700. So it would be 20% of that that they would pay. And I'm not so good at math. <laughs> so <laughs> How many units? Um, how many units in that building? 20. 20. I do not remember. 10% is 770, so 20% <laughs> is 340. There we go. <laughs> I should have been able to figure that out. Um, I can see if I can look it up real quick. Can we do a, another percentage? I mean, I'm we not. cannot. In, I'm not crazy about waiving impact fees. Mm -hmm. and I'm <coughs> So there are two waivers that are allowed under the ordinance. Um, the first one is 60% waiver for uh, low and moderate income uh, properties, and then the infill rehab and reuse, which is 80%. And how long has that been in effect? Since the beginning. Uh, since 2011. Which is the beginning, right? Yeah, I think it was yeah. just before your term. Yeah, because we wanted the infill. We didn't want the empty buildings. Yeah. And this regulation had to be approved by the city council. We don't want to waive impact fees yeah. besides this in infill because I I I, I, am, I guess I understand the rationale, but it hurts. It, but it, it, not only does it hurt, but you know this construction got uh, he did a lot with the federal government and got a lot of federal funding with respect to some of the things that he was doing down there. Smart guy. Uh, smart guy. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying he's not a smart guy. I'm saying I'm like. He also had a lot of environmental contamination that he had to deal with. Yeah, a lot. So and although Which he got, is still sort of ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. And he did get funding for that, but, but there was a large time factor behind that too, which is money. So we're going to waive 80% of it, not 20%. Correct. He oh, would okay. pay 20, yep. He would get I, 20. I would certainly recommend this. I think with all of the aging infrastructure we have around the city, um, in order to encourage yeah. development interior of our urban areas and not keep pushing it to the edges, to the edges, to the edges with, with more green space development, um, I think waiving of the impact fee is the least we can do. Um, and it will bring investments into the city i mean this project is bringing people to the downtown who now shop and drink coffee and go out to <coughs> dinner in the downtown um it's it obviously brings up a blighted old building which brings up property values all around it as well when did the um when did this project start before i came here in yeah. 2004. the original long water street you're talking about yes. so. yeah. mm -hmm. Because if, if you're right, the impact fees didn't come in until 2011. That's correct. So he came in with the entire site. I know. In what, 2001 or two? Yeah, I, I don't know when. Yeah, he then came and amended the plan to include building three in 2000 and it must have been, two, it must have been 2011 because he is subject to the impact fees because they had other plans for that building that's right yeah retail and so on and Green so forth that didn't right. that didn't work out and they had to get rid of that generator that was, that was just 2014 i think actually yeah. oh right i was yeah. just after i should say yeah. after 2011 they yeah. were, that building was originally scheduled to be a condominium and they changed it over to a, to an apartment right 
Correct. Five, Correct. Five. I think so. I think it had some retail component to it. it, it, it was gonna and the, retail. Yeah, it the downstairs retail. was going to be retail, and and the portion that came out over the river was going to be retail. And then yeah. there was a restaurant piece. It was going to be a restaurant. Yep. But hasn't hasn't he abandoned or um, the building that fell down over the river? Um, so. I know that there is discussion about possibly not moving forward with building one. Um, they've lost their grandfathering for DES permits. Um, it is it is directly right over the canal, so there are structural um, thoughts that need to be taken into consideration to build a building not only on the riverbank but over a canal. Um, so I know that he's contemplating not building that building. Where does that canal go to? It empties out up. There's a tiny little, um, I think it's an insurance company building, on the end behind Binny Media on the end of the city hall parking lot. It actually starts up right there. Behind the spa. Yep. Yeah, behind the yep. spa, and then ends. It goes right under downtown. Underneath mm -hmm. the city. Yep. And if you look into the river. Yep. Yeah. If you look on the zoning map, there's a there's actually a red dotted line that outlines how it how it kind of curves through underneath downtown there was a turbine uh, generator there yeah. uh, and that's what made that spot so difficult to to build anything mm. because of the structure that mm -hmm. was there before mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like some more history on this and I'd like to hear from the applicant I and mean, that's how I, you know an 80 percent waiver and from an ordinance dating back to 2011 I don't know when he, he did this proposal and, and what it was I don't want to be stubborn and mean, and I want to encourage people to come into the downtown and develop everything. Mm -hmm. But I would like <coughs> to have more information other than he qualifies and we recommend it. I'd like to know when he when he applied, how he changed it, what was going on. Okay. Because an 80% impact fee makes a difference to the city of Laconia, and we should be Looking but at that carefully. If someone comes in tomorrow, pick a building. The one right across the street here. Okay, the old if someone right comes in street. tomorrow across the street, they're going to get an 80% reduction in the impact fee. Well, they're going to get a 60% reduction, right? No, the, the undeveloped building right next to Stewart the Park. Undeveloped one. Oh, they're okay. going to get 80%. Yeah. Okay. And they come in tomorrow with a brand new application. Right. So what's the difference? You want to change it? You got to go back and change the whole thing. Yeah, this is the deal that was made at the uh, the agreement. I, I just don't have enough history on this deal. Somebody comes in tomorrow. And they're going to get and, it, and, they, and they're they're going to get it. They're going to get okay, it. Okay, so I don't have enough history on this because they're not coming in tomorrow. They came in years ago. <laughs> you ready for a motion? Yeah, I am ready for a motion. Okay, I'll <coughs> make a motion for application two zero zero two zero one six zero 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 five SP amended to approve the uh, impact on the waiver fee. Is there a second to that second. motion? I'll second it. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all of all the question. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you. Any opposed? There is one opposed, but the motion passes. Uh, thank you very much. You can take a little comfort, David, in that this was it was before your service on the council, and this process took us a cons bounce back, bounce back, bounce back <coughs> from the council until all the councilors were satisfied that we were very look, we did, we've dealt with I, I'm not taking I, I'm not mad or anything. No, 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 no I'm okay. explaining. It's okay. I don't have enough information to to grant this whopping increase decrease. Um, just depend what the, what the paper's in front of me. Uh -huh. You remember he was b b here before the board trying to amend the walkway that was going to go by uh, that place. Yeah. And we dealt I with just don't see him dealing. getting anything different than the next guy or the next guy until... If, and we were very hesitant when we came up with the impact fees because it was new to the city and it, it got hashed out quite a bit. So if it was, and if and it was we were kind of something we were different than the next guy... And but we were kind of thrilled at the time. I don't time. know the time frames in which it was asked. We've, Does we've it had this debate. It does. Yeah. Wow. It does. In my eyes, it doesn't. In your eyes, it does. So, it, so we disagree. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, moving on, then uh, we are the application uh, acceptance uh, for uh, application PL two zero one six dash zero 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 four SU uh, ninety three dash one zero nine Weirs Boulevard. MBL 277-248-7 and 8. It's a boundary line adjustment. Does staff um, represent that this application is complete and ready to begin our formal process? Yep. yep. 
given that, I would like to ask for a motion to accept the application. Motion to accept. And is there a second? I'll second. It. Motion's been made. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Any aye. opposed? The motion passes. You're looking at. Me. <coughs> I need to talk to about the time of that thing. The. Well, it's uh, 7:35. Pardon me. The date of the public hearing. Oh. April 5th. April 5th, 2016. Oh, okay. Um, and schedule the public oh, hearing from oh, this wait, says March wait. 1st. Yes, sorry, March 1st. Okay, so the public hearing will be held the before 20th. us on March 1st, 2016. Thank you. <clears throat> Under uh, new business, just a couple comments I'd like to uh, uh, make here first is the uh, uh, you should all take. Uh, if you have an opportunity, you should go see these places. They came before us. We worked on them, stretched over the years. But the Congregational Church has completed their project of a community walkway between the municipal parking lot and Veterans Square, and it's beautiful. It came out beautiful. And the uh, their changes that they made to their building of the elevator uh, um, to go from their church hall up through their sanctuary up to the new bridge that crosses over is, is wonderful. <laughs> I had a... Uh, a um, tour by the uh, Reverend Bolton and the changes that they've also made on the um, Pleasant Street side, their main doors. They <coughs> took off the big, heavy, <coughs> dark doors and uh, repositioned them architecturally, but then put in glass. And the changes that they've made there uh, were exactly uh, that they had uh, presented to us, and they, they just come out beautiful. And that connection, uh, the city council authorizing the change of uh, parking spaces for them and that makes all the sense in the world it's improved their safety and it's uh, for the people of Laconia to move from that municipal parking lot into Veterans Square it's beautiful and they uh, have a couple benches granite benches out there that the Bank of New Hampshire put in it's just a beautiful thing you ought to you ought to go because so many times we work on just papers and get into all details and it's fun to see things I've been there you can walk right from the back parking lot right around the front to the main parking lot going down by the Holy Grail. Yeah, it's beautiful. Really nice. It's beautiful. There are t a couple other things for you to go see. Uh, the two buildings, the major apartment buildings up on Provincial Road, uh, one being to be used as the dormitory for the Lakes Region uh, Community College. That one from the outside, I didn't get into it, but that one looks finished. And the other one is uh, appears to be at the point where they're putting siding on the outside. And the uh, road has been paved. The water line's been put in, and just take a drive up there. It will it will be very good. It will uh, also uh, verify the time that uh, we spend with the applicants and and trying to make these projects right. The other one that you, uh, if you're driving around the new classroom building at the community college, you can't see it from uh, 106. You need to drive in and around back. It's for their uh, automotive technicians mm -hmm. and their uh, uh, marine programs. That's really nice. It's a beautiful building. They have not occupied it yet. It doesn't appear that <coughs> way, <coughs> but that uh, it's very, very significant and a tremendous improvement to the campus, and it supports what we need here in the Lakes Region. The other things that they're going to do once they occupy that building is the space that they had used. They're going to bring the culinary program back from um, Shaker Village and uh, reoccupy redesign the uh, the current space all of which are are, are very good things for us uh, that's uh, that's about under new business uh, old business uh, discussion of the uh, back language for the wetlands and water quality ordinance uh, 235 uh, that uh, the conservation commission has asked that we uh, postpone that again so we will postpone that there are no current applications, and it's uh, it's far better for uh, us to uh, hash this thing out uh, completely <coughs> and thoroughly before anything happens with it. Uh, Planning Department report, Shannon. Yep. Um, just a few projects to update on. Um, uh, Warren, update you on the Apple Ridge project, which is moving along. 
They'll be looking for COs for that the one building that's very close to being done within probably the next month or so. Um, and then the second building is probably a month or so behind that. So that'll be coming quickly. Are they going to have an open house for that building? Uh, we probably could ask. They could it's really neat. Me. The other thing I was asking uh, Shanna is to have a tour of the new uh, fire station. Mm. Uh, we worked on that project, and it mm -hmm. would be really neat. Yeah. And so if you could ask them. Uh, and Absolutely. Uh, they, they would absolutely love to have you guys through. And so that's something I can probably pull together in the next couple of weeks. So keep your eye open for an email. Thank you. Yep. Um, the other project that has been working right along is the FW Web project behind us. You can see they, um, they're they completely uh, framed oh, out, the roof on, um, shingles on. Um, they're also completing a portion of the river walk as part of that project. And you'll remember we've got a grant to connect that piece of the river walk, um, the FW Web piece, to Church Street. So that is in the engineering phase right now. The FW Web River Walk then also connects to the pedestrian bridge. Um, so when that's complete, you'll be able to walk from City Hall across the pedestrian bridge, bridge at um, One Mill Plaza here, um, and then all the way to Church Street along the river. In addition, that grant will pay for River Walk um, from the edge of the City Hall parking lot. So the River Walk goes from City Hall to the edge of the City Hall parking lot. The grant will pay for it to go continue across um, several properties there including the spa property and come out on Church Street as well um, and so um, by the time that is fully constructed we'll have full river walk along the north end of the Winnipesaukee River up here um, that grant is also paying for some sidewalk upgrades to the middle school and to um, the Woodland Heights School as well as lighting on a pedestrian path that they have off of Stephen Street um, we're hoping to get shovel in the ground this fall on some of the um, the um, less intense projects, probably the sidewalks and the lighting, the river walk probably won't be constructed until 2017. Um, but it's fabulous. We got half a million dollars to help us pay for that. So, um, The other project I wanted to update you on is the Langley Cove project. Um, this is some um, a project that those of you that have been around for a while are very familiar with. Um, those of you that are new um, will need to come up to speed fairly quickly. Um, this was a project that was originally proposed to the city back in 2005 or so. Um, we actually denied it without prejudice in 2009 or so and asked them to reduce the number of units. It was originally proposed at 340 units. Um, we asked them to reduce it because the land that they're building off of on Weirs Boulevard had steep slopes, um, wetlands, a vernal pool, um, uh, ledge. Um, so they did come back in 2011 with a reduced uh, number of units at 2000, uh, um, uh, 290. We have been reviewing that plan since, 200, uh, since 2011. Um, it includes third-party reviews on engineering, on traffic, on the fire and, and sprinkler system because of the water pressure. It includes 2,000 linear feet of um, uh, replacement pipe on Weir's Boulevard. Um, it's a very large project. Um, they are completing their review with the Technical Review Committee um, and most likely will be before you uh, either in April or in May. Um, again, it's a very large project, so I recommend that if you um, need to come see me to get updated or review plans, um, it would be wonderful to do that. Um, either Brandy and I are happy to sit down with you and kind of review um, kind of what we've done in the past because um, this is not a project where you can just start off um, kind of cold because we've been dealing with it um, for nearly a decade. So, What's their phasing going to be? Um, they will have six phases. Um, I probably shouldn't go into any more detail than that. Um, what I can say is that um, the, the city rule, and I think it's a state rule too, is that you can't put any more than 50 units within a development without having a second access road. Um, the Pogus Woods is up to 49 units, and so one of the early phases will be a connection from Weirs Boulevard up to the Pogus Woods property. So that would be phase one? Uh, I think it is actually phase two one and two um, and then that will allow Pogus Woods to continue being built out while they continue to work on is that where Cove. that wooden bridge is mm, no nope. the wooden bridge yeah they remember. were going to put it and then when they acquired they, the Pogus Woods they yeah, didn't they have to do that. no 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 they didn't have to put that in no so that that parcel where the bridge actually um, oh wait on uh, the Pogus Woods parcel 
That wooden I just bridge? remember there was a wooden bridge. There was a bridge that they had to put in. Yes. So Pogus Woods will not have to put that in if they connect okay, to the so lane. The bridge was on Pogus Woods. That's okay. correct. Yep. But we wisely made them pick up two roads going back to White Oaks Road. We did. Yep. And uh, that was part of the deal for the first one. That's and, correct. And for this one. That's correct. So they're not going to do the. I got a lot of access. static on that, I might add, but they're not going to do the second access. Sure, prove worthwhile. White Oaks for Pogus Woods because they're going to connect. Correct. To Langley Cove. Cove. Correct. Yep. You'll be happy to know, David. All this almost 300 units, <coughs> and the what is the forty over there at Pogus Woods? <coughs> uh, it'll be nearly the 70, rate. almost 80, I think. Impact fees apply to all. No, no, <laughs> that's not correct. They do not. Because they were all approved before 2011. Even the Langley Cove? Um, Langley Cove was submitted before, <coughs> like literally a week before the impact fee was approved. Damn it. I know it. So you'll have to go to work, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> See? Yeah, you know? The other thing I want to. I don't want this to come back and haunt you, you know? <laughs> other thing I want to update you on is the other grant that we got, the VHB grant. Um, I should say, too, the, um, <coughs> the grant for the river walk and the sidewalks was awarded to HEB out of North Conway. They're the ones that are working on the engineering <coughs> for that grant. Um, the watershed grant in the Weirs was awarded to VHB. Um, we've been working with them. That grant includes um, is a follow-up from when we had the bacteria sniffing dogs here. Okay. Um, just a quick background. There are dogs that are trained to actually smell bacteria in water. Um, they are absolutely amazing and extremely fast and cost effective. But they don't like to be petted. They do not like to be pet, correct. <laughs> I think both Don and my son learned that. <laughs> um, um, and so this is a follow-up to basically um, we have ID'd areas where the bacteria was found. Um, and for those of you that are skeptical, we did um, take hard water samples and get them lab tested and in fact they were high in bacteria. Um, and so this money will pay for what we call BMPs, um, best management practices, basically water treatment um, for some of the stormwater systems down there where we had the, the high bacteria. So this will be along Lakeside Ave, both um, near the pier, behind the boardwalk there, and then down behind the boardwalk on the, um, the park property on the other side. Um, so that's in the engineering stage as well. And I think that's all I have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions to Shanna? The, uh, under the Lakes Region Planning Commission, uh, there is um, quite a bit in the newspapers now about the uh, progression of the 10-year transportation plan that's required under state law. And uh, I just wanted to help um, people understand that the 10-year plan actually begins right here and that uh, it is a responsibility of the Lakes Region Planning Commission to put together the recommendations for the 30 community area, the Lakes Region Planning Committee area. And Shanner is on the a full voting member of the Transportation Advisory uh, Council. And uh, their representatives from all 30 communities get together and uh, develop a plan for the region as to what we want um, the state to include in the 10-year transportation plan. There are constraints and we were told ahead of time as to how much money could be devoted to these projects, but uh, that's the process. Uh, it's, it's a very intense one. Uh, the people from the Lakes region, uh, it, it's really um, gratifying to see that even though everybody represents their own community, we're all interlinked and none of us are independent islands by ourselves. And so the transportation system, the road system, and the bridge system is critical. So that's where it's begun. The more you see now it's starting to move from the uh, governor and the Gasset Committee uh, into the legislature. And uh, this is where it gets interesting. There is more political uh, trade-offs that occur in that process. But um, it, it did begin uh, here in Shanna, uh, represents uh, Laconia very well on that uh, committee. Uh, Conservation Commission? Yes, and I apologize. One thing I forgot, I wanted to mention the Chamber um, just had their annual meeting and gave a number of awards for construction projects, and Laconia won <laughs> several of them. I just want to mention those real quick. Laconia Fire Department won 
um, as well as the um, what they call the downtown beautification community park which is the gateway park both of those projects won an award as well as the country Laconia country club for its renovations um, Edward Jones which moved into um, Union Square GC engineering and Levendy properties at 633 Main Street and their rehab project uh, Fertello's grill and their addition um, the Holy Grail of the Lakes region um, and Laconia Community Area Land Trust, which uh, won the environmental award for the green features that it in, um, includes into most of its projects. So many of those projects we have seen. So I just wanted to let you th know that those projects have received awards. Um, Conservation Commission um, this past month have been working um, uh, on our presentation. They're also um, uh, meeting with DES consultants regarding the Black Brook study. Um, DES has to approve uh, the consultant's report to make sure it meets uh, state rules and regulations regarding the study, so that's been happening. Um, they've been working on the Milfoil um, subcommittee. Um, the city received Milfoil from, funds from the state again and have partnered with Opeachy as well as um, the Langley Cove um, grant that was awarded for um, kind of a, a citywide effort regarding milfoil on, um, on our water bodies. Um, they continue to meet with property owners to encourage um, uh, uh, sale of lands for conservation purposes and conservation easements. Um, and they have been communicating with Prescott Farm to encourage open space expansion um, in conjunction with the Laneley Cove project. Did we want to discuss the uh, membership on the Conservation Commission? Yes, thank you for reminding me. Um, so <coughs> the planning board has a liaison to the Conservation Commission. Um, it is Bill Contardo. Um, I know Bill's not here tonight, but we have spoken with him about the fact that he's been the liaison for probably five or six years. Um, we never did put a term limit on it. Um, uh, but we were wondering if it, if it you know, it may be time um, to, to switch that up. Bill is willing and able to step off um, and we're hoping that there is a volunteer that may be interested. Um, basically the responsibility is attending the Conservation Commission meetings which are um, the second and fourth Wednesdays of the month. Um, participating in their process um, and then and then basically bringing the planning board's point of view to their process and bringing their point of view back into our process. Um, so we'd be looking for someone um, to volunteer to fill that position. Time they meet? I think it's usually early, like six or seven six. maybe? I think, I think it's six, at six. But we can get that. Six on Wednesdays. Would you all think about it and then give uh, Shannon a shout? What we were concerned about, uh, Bill was uh, on uh, three sort of subcommittees, the chair of the CIP committee and he's on the Architectural Review Committee, which um, is part of the process for Langley Cove has, has met and are providing input into that process prior to it being formally presented here. Again, uh, this board is the sole uh, final authority on any project like this and, and every person here uh, fully participates in that discussion and approval process. But years ago, we created this architectural subcommittee, and it's comprised of a former member of this board, Peter Stewart, who is a uh, the premier architect and a longtime Laconia person. I serve on that committee. Uh, Bill Contardo does, and Edwin uh, just agreed and uh, joined with us for his first uh, uh, session today. And this one is a uh, this is a very large project coming down the pike. And so uh, knowing we're also trying to involve uh, the new people on the board so that it isn't just the, uh, the old senior members that, that do all the heavy lifting. So if you uh, are interested in the conservation G's, uh, position, just please talk to uh, Shanna. Thank you. Uh, City Council. Really nothing to report. Then on to other business. Um, this has, uh, I would like to bring a uh, issue before the board. It did not make it in time for the uh, pre-printed approval. But the City Council has uh, uh, issued a notice of public hearing in that uh, members of the, uh, of the City have applied to the City Council to acquire property from the City. 
and uh, this is uh, the process that they that uh, it goes through is that the city council first has a public hearing to determine if this property should be con uh, considered surplus that's step one and that's the public hearing that's going to be taking place on uh, February 8th uh, next week so what I um, <coughs> what we just passed around is the uh, in yellow is uh, land area off of Davis Place it uh, the the brook coming through there that runs across the paper is the Jewett Brook and down the left hand side is the Winnipesaukee River um, a few maybe a year or two ago uh, where you see the number uh, 21 that mr. Bean came before us for a uh, approval which we granted to uh, come close to the river to put a deck on he's renovating that house completely along the Davis place in this yellow area is now a uh, very large uh, city-owned uh, parking lot level parking lot light lit uh, it is striped even though stripes are hard to see and it was put in as part of the Scott Williams uh, project when it was done and that's that large uh, brown thing on your right hand side this land is is all flat and it uh, there is a bridge that connects these the the yellow on the top uh, to the other side of the Jewett Brook it must have been years ago for it's wide enough for uh, vehicle travel and it's it's part of the history but it is a uh, walkable uh, bridge across there this land uh, goes down to the waterfront the riverfront there and I said it's all level there are now uh, paved uh, a walkway to get down through there and the city um, DPW the rec department has put some barrels down in there but it is uh, a large area down close to the river that is unimproved meaning that there's a lot of invasive species and things of that nature there but on, on seeing this um, what I have done was put together a uh, letter and I'd like to read it before it's passed out um, asking for uh, approval by this board so that I could present to the uh, City Council uh, representing this board Is it, uh, just one question it's all vacant now there's no nothing on it except for that uh, parking uh, lot that is on there and and I did not count the number of spaces but it's a considerable uh, parking lot well paved well maintained uh, striped uh, lit it's right and Davis uh, place is a two-lane road coming right off a of busy corner it's overflow parking for the Scott and Williams rehab oh okay yeah I see mm -hmm. So here's the uh, letter February 2nd 2016 Lacunia Planning Board at its regular meeting <clears throat> the chairman of the Planning Board is authorized and directed to appear at the public hearing noticed for February 8th 2016 where the City Council of Lacunia is considering a request to declare parcels 4126059 and 4266022 as surplus property Davis Place as the city of Laconia's planning board is in the process of updating the master plan and that the city has committed major funding to the improvement of the downtown district uh, colonial theater project is a major example it is premature to divest a major piece of real estate in the downtown area that could be support these plans there are other possible uses for the citizens of Laconia and their guests which would add to the quality of life and economic development for the city the two parcels are very level with excellent views of Jewett Brook and the Winnipesaukee River. Currently, there are walkways on the site and a very large level parking, paved parking lot. This property is potentially a major extension of the Riverwalk, a park for residents of the area in the city, and a parking lot that could be used as a satellite facility for those parking downtown and a possible park and ride. The surrounding area is heavily residential with many properties being multi units with small lots. On Davis Place is also the very large residential building at the former Scott Williams property. On the other side of the brook is an aesthetically <coughs> pleasing apartment building, Victoria Woods. These city residents would have their neighborhoods improved by the attention to cleaning this property by the city. It is the request of the planning board that the 
these two properties not be declared surplus at this time by a vote of the Planning Board on February 2nd, 2016 and included in the legal record of this meeting. I've, uh, we have a copy here for Roy. In essence, what I'm trying to say is this, uh, this area is in uh, Ward 2, as you well know, Councillor. It's and in my ward. Your ward, <laughs> yes. You're gonna, when you're done, I've got some things to say. Okay. okay. Uh, and so what, pardon me? I'm just I'm, I'm just sure not sure which ones we're looking at on this. It's the yellow. It's all the yellow. Yeah. No, no, no. no, 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 no it's no, no, not no, all the yellow. Well, it's the light yellow. It's the light yellow. Light yellow that's side got side a yellow line. boundary line. Is that part's the light yellow. But twenty-one is in it, though. Right? And that it's that whole property that. No, has. twenty-one is not in it. No, Look, twenty-one is it. There's there's pieces that want to be acquired by the abutters. It's so, just, so this property's got got frontage on. The river? Yes, on the and river. Or the, or on the, the river. Is it? And on the river. Rivers. And aren't we, haven't we heard very strongly from the community they want access, water access for <laughs> Lake County residents? We have heard that. To the big lake. That's another, that's basically I, the old right away. You gotta, sometimes you got to so go to the little lake somewhere. before you get to the big lake. <laughs> we have it to the little lakes. <laughs> the only access would be the, to the Winnipesaukee River. Which yeah. ties to Opeachee, yeah. but does not go further because of the dam <laughs> <Right>. that's at <coughs> Lake Port. Right. You can't get from Opeachee. So you can't access, swing upstream. And we already have access to Opeachee. Right. Yes, we do. Excellent. Really good we access to We have excellent us. access to Opeachee. Mm -hmm. But what are you doing this for? So we're well, doing this at, at the last minute and putting together this statement about what we should be doing, what the city should be doing with the property. I mean, what's, what's the goal here? The goal is that this notice just came out in the paper a couple days ago. Well, let me tell you where the process is at at the city council, okay? There have actually been multiple offers for the land over the years. The city rejected one offer from Mr. Bean about two years ago, just when I was coming on the council. There, Mr. Bean is making a proposal for uh, purchase of a narrow strip of property. Um, uh, Mr. Wiley is making two proposals for the broader strip of property um, that I don't think you're aware of. But there are actually three proposals. The one that's coming before the city council at the next time, I objected to and indicated that we shouldn't be doing anything with this until we got a market value evaluation. But this really just sort of mucks up the works. And, and you want the, the planning board to take an official position with respect to how this property should be used yes, sir. without enough information. Well, th this, this sort of just like ad hoc, this is a really good piece of property and the city ought to keep, ought to consider using it, may be in fact what we find, what may be the right thing to do. But we don't do it on a last minute ad hoc basis. We don't authorize you to go before the planning board and give a pitch to, to sell or not sell the land. What we do is, it, this land isn't going to go up for sale on, one, the council's probably not going to authorize this sale at the next meeting. We're going to get an evaluation. We're going to make a determination of what the land can be used for, what it can't be used for. I mean, the piece of property that um, Mr. Bean is uh, asking to purchase, and um, Ms. Saunders can tell you, has very limited use because it's wetlands, right? So you, he, can't, he can't do anything with it. No, it's between it. 21 and, his pro and the Bean property. And the issue is... And, and it's, all, it's all buffer from Dewey Brook. The it's corner. yellow. It's yellow. It's a piece of the yellow. Yeah, it's basically this, right this area right here. Right here. Okay. <clears throat> Warren, you brought 21. On the side of... Is this going to answer this the thing? number 21 on this plot? Yes. That's just the house that's being renovated. Okay. That's okay. where we gave him permission to build a, to build okay. a, a porch. Okay. Yeah. He yeah. wants to buy a narrow strip of land across the river from the trees in towards the house, which basically serves as a dumping area for shopping carts and other things. Of But 
that's neither here nor there. Um, Mr. Wiley wants to do something specific with either a strip of land down by uh, the river or has made a second offer for the purchase uh, of the entire strip of land. That's what's happening before the council. None of that, I don't think, is going to be declared surplus um, at the next council meeting because I'm looking and to get an evaluation, get some kind of sense of what this property is worth, and get some kind of sense of what the city can do with it. But this is just, uh, with all due respect, this is just premature. Um, and with not enough information, we're making decisions about what should be done with Davis, with this land down at Davis Place, based upon hardly any information. So I'm, Okay, I said it. I, you know, <laughs> just, just, just from my perspective, I think the, 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 the most important point that's raised is that we're looking, and not, it's not just this parcel, it's also the parcel over by the fire station. We're we're, the city's looking to declare certain pieces of parcel as surplus in the midst of a master plan update, which doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense. Why not wait? Because the master plan process may come up with a great idea I'm not that the city council. No, no, no. I understand. I, I'm not suggesting that this. I agree with you. Okay. So as opposed as opposed to saying that we think it should be used for X, let's just hold off, not do anything, and consider the proposal after the after the master plan has been adopted. It could be the master plan says that's eh, all surplus. Get rid of it. There's but, not a. <coughs> but it, let I, me be candid. Let me be candid. There's not a whole lot of warm and fuzzy feelings about the master plan uh, at this point in time on the council. Now, I think we're all trying to change that and making progress. Mm -hmm. But to say that we should hold off to the ma till a master plan is not going to get you any traction uh, with the city council. That's just my take on what's going on. Um, and, you know, and to, to forge off on this, that's disappointing. And, and I, but there's, uh, as you say, there's no way that anything should be done with it without knowing what the value of it is. Hmm. Okay. Bingo. Oh. And I've said that. Okay. And I opposed putting this. I, I was the sole dissenting vote to put this uh, on a on a hearing to declare it a surplus because we don't know what the values are. But this and hearing it, could declare it surplus. There's all kinds of things that can happen. One of the things that can happen is that we get an evaluation of the property to determine what value it has. Because for development rights, the little strip of property that Harry Bean wants to purchase has really no development rights for the city of Laconia at all. And there's always ways to carve out rights of ways and uh, passage and all that stuff in terms of whatever tr transaction the city enters into. It's the larger piece of property that we don't know what the value is. And it may have value for the future for si the city's planning purposes, but it may not. And we may have actual, I don't know, we're looking into it now, we may have actual some kind of contractual rights with Scott and Williams or the folks who developed that to uh, maintain the parking lot as an overflow parking lot. We, we may have an obligation to do that. And we're trying to figure that out too in terms of what we're doing. So I guess what concerns me is when you read in the paper that the, the city council wants to give up a whatever they want to call it. I, I envision a small piece of property that's not worth anything to the exact direct of butter. But I look at this big parcel over here. That's why a different the hell would you story. Guys even bring it up. That's and right. Why would you be we, the only we, loan we, to center? We, we, it? it hasn't been it hasn't come before the well, council. Well you're the loan to center about Whatever you uh, said I'm the loan with. dissenter on the small strip of property I that's you actually were the loan on this one. No, this ha the large one hasn't come before okay. the before the council yet. It didn't get the proposal didn't get to the city manager in time to get it on the agenda for the last city council meeting. But one of the councilors wants to say this is surplus. Also, is that no, the no, no? no nobody's moved to declare this is surplus and do anything with it. It's going to be on the agenda 
to be considered along with <coughs> Harry Bean's request to p purchase that small strip of land. I think they're two separate issues. So yeah, why would someone want to put it on the sale agenda? Of the sale of the big settlement isn't even on the isn't isn't even a consideration yet. The council has done nothing with that. The only thing the council has done is to declare that narrow strip of property that Harry Bean wants to purchase as surplus. And it doesn't mean that if we we have to do anything with it it doesn't mean if we, even if we declare it surplus that we have to sell it we don't have to do anything with it we can table it we can ask for an evaluation we can ask for an evaluation of the entire entire piece of property because mr wiley's request to declare it a surplus will be on the agenda for the next meeting. So that's what's going to happen at the next meeting. There isn't going to be a wholesale uh, sell-off of Davis Place. So this is just premature in terms of our participation. And may maybe we have a role at some point, but not now. That's just my thought. The notice of public hearing, though, does call for the uh, public hearing consisting of 1.67 acres of open green space and an asphalt parking area of approximately 40,000 square feet. So at the public hearing, by a majority vote of the councilors, this no, partial could wrong. be declared surplus, which is step that's, one. That's wrong. I don't know what you're reading from. Yes, it was the public notion, pu uh, public notion. That's what's going to be on the agenda. For my for next week, it's yes, the, and the issue will be whether to declare it as surplus. Nobody's going to sell anything. This is how the process works. Okay, Wiley's request didn't get on the agenda because he was late for the last council meeting. He makes the request because of the protocol. We now send that. We now put the put it on the agenda. The only thing that's declared surplus right now is Harry Bean's one narrow little strip request. Okay, that's the only thing. So, what's that public hearing for? To it's to declare all these parcels as surplus, which is step number one. And well, that's what's being brought up, but that doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen. No, but the city council at a public hearing takes testimony, and the planning board is a uh, participant, and we're responsible for the master plan and this area. And for them hurts. to know at this time what our feelings are is don't declare it surplus, I think is a very responsible thing to do. And whether they, uh, they are the final determining body for city property what's uh, bought and sold it is not us but we have in my opinion we have a response a right to, to input, a, a right to input. Yeah. david so just just so i understand so if if you you said it's premature yeah the public hearing the, the city council has the ability and the authority to declare it as surplus correct yes okay and they at that public hearing they're going to take testimony from the public as to whether or not to declare it surplus. Yes, and so if one of you wants to appear and, and testify, you can do that. Mm -hmm. But the idea of authorizing uh, the uh, idea of authorizing the chairman to take a public stand with respect to the to the planning board at this point in time, I think is premature. Doing it that way is just. If you want to speak, go speak. If you want to speak, go speak. We'll listen to you. But you know, taking a position, and it's. What kind of like? I'm missing something. It doesn't. What, what kind of is? It's like last minute. It's like you know. Let's put this not even on the agenda. Let's read out this statement and ask for a vote of support. I, it's does, just does not it the way to, to be, go about things. Does it have to be two public hearings? It, this the notice of public hearing is for a public hearing right. for um, for a, this land area. But would they if they before wouldn't there have to be two public hearings on it or no just one? It's it's noticed as as one. In order to sell it, we have to declare it as surplus first. Okay, mm -hmm. so <laughs> once we declare it as surplus, we don't have to sell it. We don't have to do anything. But you could do that with one public hearing. Right. Okay. So just to declare it as surplus. We don't want it to be. Declare it surplus. I, I don't see where I don't see where it hurts. I, I it's it's uh, we are uh, 
we are the planning board. We're responsible for the master plan. This is an important piece of, of, of land. When you walk it, it's, it's, it's really pretty. And the residential, uh, right across you at Brook, it surprised me. I didn't know it was down there, but Victoria Woods is a very large, uh, well-maintained uh, senior yeah, uh, yeah, housing it facility. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Scott Williams, the people in, that live in that building also only have on the other side, which we see, is the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And and so I, I think it is our responsibility to advise the uh, city council what our thoughts are. And I agree. I agree. do they need to uh, obey us? No, they don't. It's their decision. Do we know how much of that parking lot is used by Scott and Williams? Or? Uh, they're, they, uh, eat, when I've been out there, there have been yeah, no. several cars in that parking lot. Okay. Part of my, and I've presented it uh, several times as to my personal opinion, is that it should be made into a public, publicized park and ride. Who, who were, do we have any idea who actually uh, 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 made it into a parking lot and hot topped it and put the lights in? And it was part of the process for the approval of the Scott Williams the building. Scott Williams, it was yeah. put in. I at don't the time know actually who paid yeah, for like it. Twenty cars that parked there, or something like that. Yeah, but it is it is city owned I, I, and I it's city maintained. Any, I really don't see anything wrong with expressing an opinion. I, I, in fact. And, and that's why I brought it before you. I don't think that there's anything wrong, and I think it's incumbent upon us to uh, to advise the city council what our what our thoughts are at this time. It can be later on. They in their analysis they come back and they say no, we're going to sell it. But we have done our responsible uh, exercise, our responsibility of saying, please don't. If there's additional parking. Is this the senior living Besides unit you were talking Scott about? No, well, you know, yeah, if that's the Wiley. So the city senior living could access. This must be here. Residents could access that parking mm -hmm. and be par able to park yes. there. I think that's that would be a there? very huh. good thing. Well, they can, and this is the well, Davis saying, place is is uh, two it's lane. Sort of, it's sort of out of the way. Yes. So a lot of people don't know about it. Oh, uh, I don't think anybody does. Well, I, I shouldn't say. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking of other buildings that are close that get overwhelmed with parking, like. Parks and Rec. They, there's not a lot of parking there, and sometimes there are, are Santa's Village. There are other things that go on there where it'd be nice to know that you could park close and walk there, and especially even the high school. To be able to park there and just walk that little bit of distance to the high school, and there they have next to nothing for parking. So that, that's why I wrote it, and that's why I'm presenting it to you. As you all know, no matter which officer can only speak for the planning board after a vote of the planning board. Mm -hmm. I was uh, planning on attending this meeting to express my personal opinion, but that's not the action of the planning board. Call the question. Shanna, from a staff standpoint, what can you do with this thing? Yeah, that's what I was. Um, I can tell you that years ago there was discussion about a park and a playground on the mm -hmm. piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, but you know, like if someone was to buy it, what could they do? Housing? Oh. Sure, you could put housing. Um, the buildable area is, is small. There's the setback off the Winnipesaukee River plus the 75 foot off the Winnipesaukee River plus 75 feet off of uh, uh, Jewett Brook. Um, I don't think there's any, um, uh, we went back and forth as to whether or not there was actually wetlands on the parcel. I don't think that we know if there are additional wetlands associated Rough with guess. it. Yes, what can you do with it? Um, it would be a small. It would be a small building. It certainly could be residential or commercial, though. The use is allowed. Both uses are allowed in that zone. So it could be a, a small condo complex or something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, or retail businesses. Or s very small retail. Yeah, or maybe office or something. I mean, it's not. There's no visibility, so retail would be tough. But b off in, in possibly the office. Space. The parking lot we're talking about is that number t 22. No, it's not. It's 20, actually 22. Uh, 22 is actually the probably the old street right of way that is associated with that bridge. Okay. Um, yeah, the bridge. Right there. Yeah. And it's yeah. just yeah. leftover property. Um, the parking lot is on lot 59, which was a Brock's piece of property um, that was donated to the city um, with the understanding that the parking lot would remain for the overflow oh, for So Scott the parking Williams. lot is on 59? It's on 59, which correct. Which is yellow. Correct. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. It's right there. Could yeah, that screen be bridged? Like Huh. There is a bridge across it. There is. Yep. So that I don't know if you can oh, see. Right, it. There's so a green. Okay. Yep. David, just the only reason this is coming up is because uh, uh, someone from Laconia 
put a request into the city council, correct? So Harry Beaton put in a request. No, the other one, the bigger one that's coming up. Why we why we put in? Yeah, and he owns that apartment right down at the end of Dave's yeah, place the one on burnt. the left. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's the one who made. That's why it's coming up for yes. That's why. So that's why that request for for his purposes will yeah. come up on the eighth, along with Bean's request. Um, to purchase the property so well I don't see where there'd be any opposition I'm sure there is but I don't know what it is to the bean purchase but the other property I don't see anything wrong with the board expressing its opinion that it would that's rather not coming up on the 8th the public notice indicated it is I, you know I don't know what the public notice is about what you just it read it, it. What it you just say. read it though from was, your legal standpoint was, what is that public notice right there what I know is coming up is Harry Baines request to purchase that um, small strip of land and declared that as surplus now what has to be done is it has to be subdivided out and the lot 59 because that's part of lot 59 so that has to be subdivided out I don't think this is from that I don't think this is related to that I think this is related to, to do they have to that's declare correct. The, the, yeah. and when that becomes ripe that may be time that's for the, not in that notice. That's, yes it no. is though it is Warren, it says right here I don't care Warren, I'm telling you what's going on you don't believe me of course I believe you <laughs> but I also know that this is a legal notice of public hearing that is doing something that we uh, that why I'm bringing it before the public of the planning board is not in the interest of the city and it's our responsibility to I, tell I the city call, council can I just call the question yes I told you what I thought yes. what I thought it is I told you what's on the table you can trust me or not it's okay it, it is just a trust. Call it's a question of trust David. well I, w I would uh, like uh, a uh, nothing to do with trust uh, no I know it doesn't I'm being a little tongue-in-cheek Don I got it's I my mean, style this um, we first need a motion to uh, authorize uh, me to present this uh, <coughs> this letter on behalf of the planning board so moved is there a second to that I'll second it is there any uh, further discussion seeing none I'll call the question all those in favor raise the right hand there's one two three four five six seven eight all those opposed thank you David and one opposed so at, we don't trust you <laughs> <laughs> act, acting as the chairman I will present this to the City Council at the public hearing <coughs> So I just want to mention, um, and I didn't want to do this until after you took your vote, that that legal notice also, um, through the interest of the downtown TIF group, who is concerned because of the long-term Riverwalk plan, um, they too have written a letter for presentation to the city council meeting on Monday night. So I just wanted to pass that out. Who, who's going to present that? Pat Wood. Uh, no, not Pat Wood. Um, uh, Ken Sawyer. Okay. And Bree, I believe. <laughs> Bree Henderson from Polish and Proper is also a TIF committee oh. member. Just for the record, I want you to know that I'm opposed to this sale. Okay. So you'll understand that. Well, we en I enjoy it. Thank you. See, now that's good communication. And you're communicating to us what you're as, doing, as what I you're, will communicate. No, what, what you're doing is just premature. We've been over it. I'm not going to debate it. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go back to the agenda. Then. You run meetings a lot faster. I'll tell you that. Okay, uh, minutes. Except the minutes from January fifth, they were uh, distributed, and there were no uh, motion. To, motion to accept. A second. 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 Motion made. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion passes unanimously. C David, did you agree? Agree with us? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I voted aye. Yeah. Uh, uh, there, is there anything further to come before the planning board? I have nothing more. Is, does any member have anything to come before the board? Uh, well, I'd like I to make a motion to, thank to adjourn. You for your time in this, because <coughs> I, it was, uh, I don't think the city should sell any surplus land, especially near downtown. So thank you for your help. Well, thank you. I suspect that at the uh, plan at the uh, city council. I won't be received well. You know, but you, you're just mucking everything up. That's <laughs> an opinion. <laughs> I'm, keeping, I'm trying to keep things straight. You're mucking it up. That's a nightmare. 
Motion to adjourn. I, we should keep a motion has so been moved. made made to adjourn. Is second. there a second? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I declare the planning board meeting closed at eight. Uh, what is this? Twenty four. Uh, Twenty four. Yeah. Thank you all.